What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, it's a bright, nice, and sunny Saturday. I hope you're enjoying your weekend as well. Uh, today we are going to go over how a septic system works. If you're new to the channel, I hope to see you click subscribe and ring that bell because I'm coming out with videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Don't miss out. And stay tuned. Let's get going. All right, guys, so let's go over the basic operation of what would be considered an anaerobic septic tank. So an anaerobic septic tank is basically sealed off from the outside air. It requires zero oxygen to breathe. That means all the bacteria and everything that's inside your septic tank does not need oxygen to do its job or live. So every septic system is going to be different. It is its own ecosystem. So it's based on uh, the household detergents that you use, the soaps, um, anything that you eat and consume and gets, uh, you know, excreted out of your body and into the tank, it will require a different uh, ecosystem in order for it to break down and do all of the things. So everybody's septic system is going to be different in the way that the enzymes and bacteria break it down. So uh, depending on where you're at um, and what you're doing, uh, you might have a system that builds up quicker. You might have a system that never produces as much sludge as you know you need to in order to get that pumped. So let's go over a couple basics to the system and then we'll talk about safe levels um, and then we're actually going to take you on outside. I'm going to show you my septic system and uh, just an easy way to check your level and what you're looking at. So this is a basic chamber system. This is big, big concrete uh, tank that sits down in the ground and you literally have just two inspection ports that are above your grass. So um, sometimes they're buried and you know uh, people have hard time finding their septic tank caps. Um, a house that we previously lived at, uh, we never found the septic system. We had no idea where it went. Uh, we poked and prodded around in the grass and we never found it. So um, now here where we live now, um, you know, we have our caps that stick out of the ground. So you have your inspection covers and then uh, after you open that up, you're gonna have an inner cover and you're gonna be able to pull out that inner cover and you're gonna be able to look down in the tank. So on the first side of the tank is your inlet side. When you open it up, you should be looking at your inlet baffle. So your, your waste from your house, everything that goes down the toilet and down the sink goes down into your tank like this. So basically, if you want to consider it this, this is a settling tank. That's all that the uh, septic system does is settle out all of the solids. So all of the solids um, are going to break down and float down into the bottom of the tank and they're going to create your sludge. Now your sludge has a bunch of bacteria and things that, that break it down over time and the bacteria and enzymes eat away at the sludge. That's what they like to do. Everything else is considered gray water or effluent. That effluent is basically just, um, you, know, you know, all of the water that you extract, in, including the, your urine, it's here in the effluent. Now this gray water is fills up the remainder of your tank. So your tank only gets as high as it, as it can to the outlet pipe. So in, in essence, this tank stays 100% full. Every time you flush a toilet or put more water into it, this, as the level goes up, it goes on out the outlet baffle and goes out into your leach field. So a lot of people call it a drain field, a leach field. Um, what it is is a series of, of maybe corrugated pipes. Every company is different, but a grid of pipes that basically your water will literally just flow out these pipes and then it drains down through the ground and is filtered by the ground. So uh, you really don't, don't have, um, you don't have any of that sludge going out of here because it is way above where the sludge is at. So uh, another reason why it has a chamber here, some systems don't have a chamber, some systems do have a chamber. That chamber allows the sludge to stay in just this section. And then some of the other fluids that might, or the other solids that might make it over, they end up over here. So you have two sections here. Um, it basically one to hold your sludge and then the other one just to just to uh, take care of that excess. The scum on top is that filmy layer uh, of stuff that just floats. So you'll have uh, stuff and oil um, 
all kinds of things that you, you put down the sink. Uh, you might have, you know, when you get a, a bucket of oil or a bucket of water and you have an oil level or oil layer on top and it looks foggy and you can't see through it, that's kind of like your scum layer. So when we go outside, I'll show you exactly what the scum layer looks like. And if you have recently used the facilities, you might see a um, some solids sitting on top waiting to sink down or waiting to break down until they sink down into your sludge. So that's exactly how that works. Um, your tank is always, you know, 100% full to that outlet. Now, it might be that you're just trying to learn a little bit about this, or you might have a problem right now. So think about it this way. If you're putting too much water into the tank and it overflows and saturates your drain field, then it could, in essence, flood to the point where it comes back in the house. Kind of like if you uh, watched Meet the Parents and Jinxie flushed the toilet and it stayed running all night. Well, what that's what it did was it flooded that, that drain field and then that water, that ground became all saturated and then it literally filled up this septic tank to where it flooded the backyard before the wedding the next day. So if Jinxie flushed your toilet and it ran all night and you backed up your septic system, you might have an issue. If you have a clog anywhere here or your sludge builds up too far, your sludge then goes out to, through your drain field and then you have a biomat problem or something like that. You don't want your sludge going out the outlet pipe because then it clogs up all of these little holes where your effluent is supposed to drain out of. So think of it like that. If you allow your tank to, to fill up too much with sludge, then we have an issue. So a lot of people ask, how often should I pump my septic system? This is an answer that is not it is not um, answerable when it comes to duration of time. It is not based on any amount of time. It is dependent completely upon your household and completely upon the ecosystem that is created in this tank. The correct answer is that once your sludge becomes more than 25% of your overall water level, so your water level is the entirety of your tank. Remember the water fills up only to a certain point where it goes out the outlet, your sludge can only take up 25% of that before it starts becoming an issue. Now, a lot of professionals say 25 to 33. I've even heard some say 35. If you're around the 35% mark, you might have an issue. You want to make sure you get that pumped out. Now, some things to, uh, to keep this maintained are uh, stuff like enzymes, enzyme packs and stuff like that. Let me show you. All right, so sometimes I have liquid bacteria that I like to use, but uh, Zep makes a awesome product called Septic Defense. Um, these are little enzyme packets. So I'm not going to open them and touch them with my hands. Um, it's something that you want to use. Uh, you know what? I'll wash my hands directly after. I'm gonna show you exactly what these look like. Um, and you shouldn't get anything on you, but I don't like to uh, touch anything without uh, having gloves on because these are enzymes. This is bacteria. You touch your eyes and you get the crap and you, you don't want to. So uh, these are little enzyme packets. You drop them in the toilet, let them dissolve, and this puts enzymes into your tank and allow your sludge to break down faster. A good preventative maintenance solution for you to make sure that, uh, you know, yeah, you're taking care of it and you're maintaining that, uh, that uh, amount of sludge that you want that's healthy and not unhealthy. All right, I've washed my hands. I like to take precautions and all that stuff because uh, you never know uh, what could have broken open and then you have bacteria and stuff on your hands. Just keep gloves on or wash your hands immediately thereafter. Um, don't touch anything. So that's just one of the precautions that I take. Um, I think I've explained this well enough that I'd like to just go outside. Let's show you my septic system and a couple things to look at. All right, guys, so I just lied to you. I, it was a great, awesome Saturday here, but now we've got storms rolling in uh, over my back here or over my head. Um, so what we need to do is hurry up and make this video happen. So we're outside. Um, I have both of my um, inspection covers here. I've painted them black. So what this is is uh, one inlet and one outlet. It should be placed right over the baffle. So you'll take off the cover and you'll look down uh, right on the, the inlet baffle or the outlet. So I'm going to take them off and show you guys what it looks like. Oh, 
Okay, so this is the inside, this is the inlet baffle side of your tank. So I know I didn't explain this in the video, but this is basically a cross member that is uh, right underneath the, um, the hole, the inspection hole. So about a foot down, um, the water goes underneath this whole thing. So here's my inlet pipe coming out from the house. You can see um, the sludge, some stuff that has not uh, broken down and fallen down in the tank. You can see over here that uh, most of it has fallen down and just a couple things are on the surface. This is the inlet side of the tank. So directly below this is where all of our sludge sits. Now we look down here and there's our outlet here. Um, so let's open up the outlet side. I'll show you what the outlet side looks like. All right, so this is our outlet side. Okay, see, you can see the water is even clearer over here um, because this is the effluent that's coming out. So as you can see, well, I just threw some rocks in there, but as you can see right here, whoop, right here, uh, the effluent is right at the level of where the pipe comes out of the tank. So you can see that's a little higher than over here where my out or where my inlet pipe comes in, see how that is above the water level. And this is this side is six to ten inches lower. So your tank will always stay right there at the outlet level. All right guys, so now we're going to make a sludge stick. Um, this is an extremely cheap option for you if you do not want to buy one of the expensive um, core sticks or uh, sludge pros or whatever they're called. Um, I've seen some that are like 75 bucks. I'll roll in a pitcher one here. Um, if you want to get all fancy with it and buy a, a new one, go ahead. Um, but I'm using a cheap option with some cheesecloth. So I've got some cheesecloth. We're going to wrap it around a piece of IMC conduit. Um, I've got a 10 foot stick. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap that around the conduit. Um, and then that will give us the, the, um, the staining from the sludge on the bottom of the stick and then up the shaft uh, we'll see where our water line is. So we'll measure our overall water line which would give us that 100% and then we're going to measure the distance of that sludge at the bottom and make sure we're under 25%. Hopefully we are but this is my annual check so if I need it pumped then I need it pumped and uh, you know we'll call the man and get him out here with the sucker truck and suck it all out and he can have all of my waste. So all right let's go ahead and make this sludge. All right guys, two things I've learned from doing this sludge stick like this is you want to wrap that cheesecloth a little loose. You want to be able to let that sludge and uh, some of the effluent move through the cheesecloth in order to saturate it. So if you wrap it too tight, um, you kind of pull it back and you get really a blurry line. So um, I've also kept the tails on my zip ties because when you pull it out of the doo-doo, you want to be able to clip it with your diagonal cutters. And then we have a bag here that we're gonna lay out on the ground and I'm gonna stand the stick up in the bag. You open your trash bag, you open the mouth of it up, you set it there and then you take your, you take your uh, thing from the end and you just slide it off the conduit. So it's literally that easy. Right, guys so um, just so you can see this better I set this over here okay so I hope you can see that well in the in the camera here you can see your effluent here on your pipe gets it all wet up to uh, up to this point right here and then here is my sludge layer I'm gonna go ahead and call it about right there um, you can see how it's darker down through here um, I'd say it stops about right here. Um, so you're looking at about the six inch mark, something like that. Um, one of the main reasons I keep cheap tape measures around, um, just like that. So, okay, we'll call it the, uh, we'll call it seven inches to be safe. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down next to the entire length here. All right, and the entire length is right about 47 inches. Okay, so um, let's call it 48 inches. Let's just make it easy, 48 inches. So six inches of sludge in a 48 inch tank. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, uh, document that 48 inches for later because that is the, um, the amount there. But six inches is definitely under 25%. I don't need to worry about pumping this tank this year. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna keep my gloves on because I'm about to take the uh, cheesecloth off of the, uh, the pole and get it uh, put in the trash can. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something today. Um, the cheesecloth on a piece of pipe is definitely a cheaper option. You probably have like two or $3 into it versus a 75 or $80 um, a tool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope to see you click subscribe. I did a lot of hope in there and uh, as always, if you're a subscriber and you're watching these videos, I, I uh, definitely thank you for coming around the channel and keep coming around. Um, I'll try to continue to bring awesome content. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Give me a thumbs up or I hope you give me a thumbs down, whatever you're into. Um, the sun is starting to glare now. Um, and as always, enjoy your Saturday. We'll see you guys in the next video.